Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me thank the witnesses. Um, I, um, in some respects, feel like the train's already left the station. Even if we um, disapprove of this, uh, it's vetoed, and we override a veto, this still goes before the UN Security Council, and unless the administration exercises leadership, uh, those sanctions uh, will certainly be lifted, uh, regardless of what we do in the United States. Um, and I think that's maybe something we haven't discussed here today. And then from a Homeland Security standpoint, what does that, that means we have billions of dollars being restored to the Iranians that can then go into uh, these terrorist operations. We know that they control five capitals now, really arguably Tehran, Baghdad, Damascus, Beirut, and Sana'a and Yemen. Um, that's what greatly concerns me, and I don't know if we can turn the clock back on this now. Uh, now that the P5 plus one has agreed to this, when I was in Europe, uh, my Codel, you're absolutely correct, Ambassador, they're very supportive of this deal. And primarily, I think, because they have a lot of money that, that, to be made on this. Um, and so I don't know what we can do to stop it. Um, I can tell you what I'm concerned about is the last minute, as the chairman mentioned, the last minute arms embargo. Uh, being lifted, which could lead to Russian technology and the sanctions against the Quds Force being uh, lifted as well. Not to mention, um, you know, when you look at the track record of the IAEA and whether they can truly perform this mission with unfettered access, which I highly doubt the Iranians are go going to give us access to. And when I look at what is, what are they giving us access to? Nuclear facility sites. It doesn't include their military facilities, which arguably is where a lot of this could potentially take place. And then the lastly, the intercontinental ballistic missiles, which have been talked about a great deal that they can mass produce. In general, as you know, the intelligence estimates are indicating by the end of possibly as early as next year could have capability to hit the United States of America. There's only one reason why you produce these things. It's to deliver a nuclear warhead. So all these things put together in addition to the rhetoric I think I agree with Senator Lieberman that it's more risk for America and more reward uh, for um, Iran. Um, I want to end with this because this, this is probably the worst. When I was in Saudi, I think Senator and General, as you mentioned, they asked me, why are you negotiating with Iran? Why are you doing this? I met with Netanyahu. Why are you doing this? You're, this will result in a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. And as you indicated, Saudis are already taking steps now, maybe working with Pakistan to produce their own uh, nuclear capability. Then Turkey's going to want that, then Egypt's going to want it, and on and on and on. I think that's one of my biggest concerns here is the result of all this uh, backfiring and a not so great result. I, Senator General, if you could both comment on that. Well, Chairman McCall, uh, it's good to see you. I, I, of course, I agree with you. Uh, all your uh, concerns or question about what happens at the United Nations if we reject, uh, if Congress rejects the agreement and uh, President's veto is overridden is a really interesting question. I mean, in the most direct sense, you'd think that the deal, therefore, would be dead so that it, it would not be, uh, there would not be a basis for going to the United Nations, but based on having read it one and a half times this morning, I'm not sure I could swear to that. Uh, under oath. So it's a, it's a really interesting question. And um, again, I come back to what I said before. Uh, let's never underestimate our power. The United States not only is a military power, we're an economic power. And if we continue to apply sanctions which deny Iran and countries that deal with Iran to our banking system, it's going to affect the Iranian economy. Uh, and, and let's never forget that. Uh, General Hayden. Very, very briefly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've trying to play catch up with the agreement and read the fine print this morning. It's not at all clear to me that this will not be resolved in New York before the congressional review period has expired. And so we may have the administration going to one deliberative, deliberative body about this before this deliberative body has a chance to vote. Mr. Chair, if I could just echo that point, I don't, I don't know the answer to that either. If the UN Security Council approves this before Congress even has a chance to, to vote on it, and then what happens, are the sanctions then lifted by the European uh, our international partners? 
irrespective of what the United States does. I, I don't know the answers to this as, you know, this agreement just came out, but uh, I think that's something we need to Mr. take McCall, a look Mr. at. Mr. Chairman, if I may say so, take the liberty. Uh, you're raising a really interesting question, and it may be that one of the points as you start your deliberation here on this agreement that you could achieve bipartisan agreement on is to ask the administration not to go to the United Nations uh, before they come to Congress. I mean, that that's, that's, it seems to me that our Constitution requires that kind of respect first for congressional consideration. Oh, I, I, I agree 100 percent. I yield back. Okay. Uh, let's go to Lois Frankel of Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, first of all, I want to thank you gentlemen for this very